What's going on guys? This is Mike Inouye and today we are going to talk about Skylanders Giants on the Nintendo 3DS. So last month we talked about Spyro's Adventure on the 3DS. So now it's time to talk about its sequel that came out in 2012. 2012 was an okay year for the 3DS. Nintendo released the 3DS XL, which is a bigger version of the 3DS and perfect for playing Giants on. And we got games like New Super Mario Bros. 2, Kid Icarus Uprising, Resident Evil Revelations, and of course... <laughs> Dylan's Rolling Western. Can't forget about this banger. But there's only one game from 2012 that we'll be discussing today, and no, it's not Wreck-It Ralph. Skylanders Giants was a brand new Skylanders game that introduced giants. Bigger, stronger, slower. Skylanders that had abilities regular Skylanders couldn't do. Giants was also the game that was notorious for having a bunch of returning Skylanders, specifically 75% of the 32 Spires Adventure roster, leaving the other 25% to rot and live under the forgotten name. And then you had Lightcore Core figures which glowed when you placed them on the portal and cost more than regular Skylanders. Like what were they thinking with Drobot's Lightcore Core figure? He just has a dot on his back. All of these figures were brought to life once again for a brand new adventure to once again stop chaos. But that wasn't the only new adventure. The 3DS version was once again given a different story that featured fast paced platforming gameplay. So what does the starter pack look like? Well there's actually two you can choose from. If you bought the Spyro's Adventure starter pack from last year, you can get the Portal Owners pack. You only get Tree Rex and his card and sticker sheet, the game, and the poster. Just be sure you still have at least one other Skylander figure. You still need at least two to play this game. Or you can get the standard starter pack and buy another portal. Just like the console versions, this portal was updated with a clear ring instead of a green one, so at least there's some difference. This 3DS starter pack is one of the more disappointing ones, in my opinion. Sure, you're getting an in-game variant figure when buying this starter pack, which really wasn't exclusive to the 3DS starter pack you could get it other ways as well but you're still getting tree rex and series 2 cinder which come in the other starter packs i mean it's not a big deal for people who only got the 3ds starter pack but when you're someone like me who got the 3ds starter pack and a console starter pack you ended up with a second tree rex and cinder i mean for god's sakes that's why we have a shit ton of tree rex out in the world so yeah i bought the more expensive starter pack damn right because i wanted that punch pop fizz i didn't care that i got a second portal. I needed one anyway since I forgot to take out my batteries in my old one. Guys, please make sure you take the batteries out of your portals when you're not using them. This sh is disgusting. Alright, now it's time to play Skylanders Giant on the 3D- <laughs> Wow, I wasn't expecting that loud ass roar. The villain you're trying to stop from taking over Skylands is a giant pirate named Captain Frightbeard. His ship, the Phantom Tide, eats islands and shits them out, stealing all its valuable resources. The game starts you off saving Flynn alongside Hugo's help, a character that got the boot in the console version. Why was Flynn kidnapped by pirates? Because this doofus won a map that locates a pirate's chest that Frightbeard is after in a card game? Dude thought it was a cake recipe, I, I don't know how. The chest of exile was used by the Archean to lock up Frightbeard and his crew and sealed it with his own sword. Don't ask me how Frightbeard got out, apparently he worked out a deal with a sorcerer or something. Basically, you're going around Skylands to look for the clues that will lead you to the chest, and the way you go to each location is by traveling on Flynn's ship. Just like the console versions, the Dread Yacht is the hub world. The ship picks up a few characters as you progress in the story, just like the console versions, for example, Cali. But other than that, there's less you can do in the 3DS version, but you got the basics. You can use Hugo and his Portaltron 9000 to summon or update your two Skylanders, bring in magic items, and even put a sidekick in it. When you first put a giant or a light core figure on the portal, it doesn't light up. Don't worry, the, the portal isn't broken. You just need to start scanning which I guess tells the portal to light up the figure. I don't, I don't know how it works, it's weird. I didn't notice this when I was playing Spyro's Adventure, but the game doesn't allow you to use two of the same Skylanders at a time. I tried using Series 1 and Series 2 Gilgrunt, but the game said screw you, use someone else. It even counts in-game variants as the same Skylander, so I couldn't even use Hot Dog and Molten Hot Dog at the same time. The only exception is that you're able to use a variation of Spyro and Dark Spyro at the same time. Most likely since they have different movesets. There's a few rooms you can go to. You have the captain's room where you can see which maps you found. A room where you can play the four adventure pack levels from Spyro's Adventure. And 
the sheep room. I guess this is where you can test out your Skylanders moves. It just feels weird that they put all these sheep in a room with heart couches. I I don't want to know what these sheep are doing. Then you have this little hovercraft that's attached to the ship. This is where you can equip hats you found and see which Skylanders you've summoned. It's just kind of awkward how you enter and leave this area because you have to sit through a loading screen. But I guess that's because the game needs to load up 99 character models. Yep, there's 99 Skylanders you can summon. Basically, you have the 37 Skylanders from the last game and the 62 new ones from this game. It's not going to show you all the characters you need when you've only summoned a small amount. But they'll start to fill in when you summon series 1, series 2, Lycor, Giant, and in-game variant figures. Finally, you have Flynn's cute ass that you can talk to when you want to go to a level, and the daily elemental bonus makes a return, which the flags indicate which elements get the bonus for the day. So in the main game, you travel to 7 locations, Pirate Bay, which is where you needed to save Flynn, Tiki Island, Sand Dune Seas, Tech Theme Park, Rust Marsh, Pirate Fortress, and the Maelstrom. There's a total of 19 levels, three of which are boss fights. Unlike Spyro's Adventure, you need to beat all the levels in an area before progressing to the next one. Since this game is more story heavy, in Spyro's Adventure you just needed to find some old Mabus, so it makes sense. The platforming style levels make up the majority of the game. While the gameplay style is pretty much the same as Spyro's Adventure, I noticed that levels are a bit more open. Sometimes I came across multiple paths to take rather than just a continuous straight path to the end of the level. Like I did a lot more exploring than I thought I was going to do, which made it feel like a traditional Skylanders console experience, which I think worked out pretty well. You can earn three stars from each level. The first star is the story mission, which you automatically earn when beating the level for the first time. The second star is the bonus mission, aka the time challenge. Back in Spyro's Adventure, this was the Hector challenge, but it's handled way better in Giants. You still need to beat the level for the first time to do the challenge however you are given the choice to do the time challenge or play without the time limit this is the biggest improvement in my opinion if i wanted to level up a skylander i would want to beat up as many baddies as i can which i wouldn't be able to do if i'm always running for my life the third star is the challenges which consist of four tasks the first three are the same for all the levels you need to collect a certain amount of coins go through all the elemental gates and find all giant areas the fourth one varies. You either need to defeat a certain number of particular enemies or collect specific items. The enemy task is much easier than the collection task. I'm always beating up enemies while playing through the game so I don't need to worry about not completing it. But sometimes I forget what I'm supposed to be looking for in the stage and I end up missing one or two of these items. Good news is when you complete one of these tasks, you don't need to do them again so you can just focus on the ones you miss the next time you play the level. Also when you complete tasks, you won't be forced to rush through the stage with a Hector time limit, which was an issue in the previous game. Speaking of time limit, if you were playing through a time challenge, you can still complete tasks. However, I wouldn't recommend doing it since it will slow you down. But if you think you can do it, it's a good way to kill two jetpacks with one bash. <gasps> What? It was a Skylanders joke. So those three boss fights that are in the game focus on beating Squidbeard, Rustbeard, and Frightbeard. Yeah, they got real creative with the names. But before you fight them, you have to beat up enemies and collect coins. Yeah, these fights are the arena levels back in Spyro's Adventure. Honestly, I think it kind of sucks that they only made three of these. But if I had to choose, I would stick with the platforming style levels. Although it was a clever idea to implement bosses during the level. You can get three stars from these levels as well. The challenges are a bit different though. You you just need to use a certain Skylander that matches the required element, don't heal yourself by eating food, and don't be a fool and get hit by the arena hazards. These are pretty quick levels to play through, but they will kick your ass if you're not careful. So like I mentioned earlier, we can still use two different Skylanders when playing and can be swapped out when you talk to Hugo. The level cap has been raised to level 15, so your Skylanders get additional boosts. Coins replace Radiance from Spyro's Adventure, but they do the exact same thing. You collect a whole bunch of them, you can earn double when you collect 10, spend them to revive a defeated Skylander or use a magic item, and at the end you can get more from the elemental bonuses and remaining time if you did a time challenge, which turns into experience. Any Skylander can open elemental gates as long as they're the same element of course. The elemental gates are a lot better in this game. Not only do the actual gates look like the gates in the console versions, but the areas 
actually represent the element. And at the end, you get a hat, which are also found in giant areas or just chilling in the level. These giant areas, of course, can only be opened by hitting them or doing a ground pound with one of the 12 giants. Yes, I'm counting the four in-game variants as well. There's giant areas in each of the platforming levels, so I recommend you at least have one giant when you're playing through the level the first time. And I highly recommend you don't use a giant for time challenges. They're powerful, they can do quite a bit of damage, but God, it feels like you're trying to run in a dream. I think Lycors are done better in the 3DS version. In the console versions, when you put a Lycor in the game, the guy goes and damages the surrounding enemies. Here, you can get that same effect. However, it recharges, so you can do it multiple times in the same level. Series 2 figures do in fact get a WoW Pal, just like they do in the console versions. It, it's just you kind of have to figure out what it is. Like I dead ass looked everywhere in this game for details on what my Skylanders wow pal was, but I couldn't find it. But trust me, their powers are there though. Double Trouble staff wasn't doing this in the last game. I don't know why they just didn't put a description with the upgrades you earn, but I guess they forgot because you can see what they are in Swap Force on the 3DS. And this might be disappointing to people, but some of the 3DS wow pals don't match up with the figure's repost. Like Series 2 Spyro doesn't have the red wings. So yeah, WoW Pals are weird in this game. But hey, at least we get something. I would have been mad if I just bought another Wrecking Ball for no reason. Also, if you're wondering, putting in a Series 3 or a Series 4 figure of one of the original 32 Skylanders will show up as a Series 2 figure. Basically, the Scorpion Striker and the regular and gold Dragonfire Cannon are just magic items. They don't unlock any arenas or anything. But magic items from Spyro's Adventure still work. Still, the Volcanic Vault doesn't do sh so I only used 29 out of the 99 Skylanders in this game. I had to always use a giant to get through giant areas, so I kind of needed to have one at all times. And I wasn't able to use everyone, but I can tell you some of the good ones I used. Bouncer works just like he does in the consoles. He even uses his eye lasers in his sprint. Hothead was done well. You can spam the Y button to shoot oil or hold it to use fire. Also, his sprint lets him turn into his signature motorcycle. Lightcore drove by is a beast. His lasers hit fast and hard, and his Lightcore special makes him that much better. Yeah, Double Trouble's Wild Pal is just crazy. I got to use Cinder longer than I used her in Spyro's Adventure, and her lightning does good damage. I don't think I ever realized you can activate her Wild Pal by jumping and pressing Y to summon a big lightning bolt though. Jetpack is a lot easier to use in this game. You don't need to worry about him running out of air, and he hits a lot faster. And finally, Flashwing was really good. Her secondary attack lets her shoot shards all over the place, which is great when enemies start to gang up on you. So after you beat Frightbeard, He's locked away with his crew in the chest that's once again sealed with his sword, which means you've saved Skylands. There's no post game or anything, but you can still do the Pirate Seas, Empire of Ice, Darklight Crypt, and Dragon's Peak levels. They're the exact same levels from Spyro's Adventure. And that's the game! If you want to 100% complete Skylanders Giants, you need to summon all 99 Skylanders, earn all 81 Challenge Stars, find the 5 ship crew members, which I didn't know you needed to do, find all 82 hats, and obtain all five map clues. The game itself is pretty short. It took me about four to five hours to beat, but you can honestly speed run this game in under an hour if you really wanted to. And 100% completing it will probably take you about 10 to 15 hours. I'm very nostalgic for Spyro's Adventure on the 3DS. That game is so easy to pick up and play, but Skylanders Giants improves so much on the flaws that the previous game ran into. The biggest one is replayability. Giants is a lot easier to replay since you can jump into a level and train your Skylander without worrying about the time limits. The game is fast paced yet adds more opportunities to explore, gives existing Skylanders new abilities while introducing fun new characters, and giants are still the larger than life characters that we all know and love. And of course the 3D is fantastic too. A lot of stuff just pops out at you, it's great. My only complaint, besides the game not telling us what WoW Pals the Series 2 figures have, have, is that two Skylanders at a time is just not enough. We got 99 figures we can use, 48 unique characters to play as, there's no way I'd be able to take them all with me on the go. Which to be fair, might be a problem only for me. But if you have a large collection of Spyro's Adventure and Giants figures, then it's just not practical to take all these figures with you on the go, since you need to swap out to match those elemental gates. If only I can use all my Skylanders at any time. 
Swap Force about to go crazy. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think of Skylanders Giants on the 3DS down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. And of course, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Why are my spider's wings still purple? Come on, Vicarious Visions.